What sparked well, it off? Like, when? how'd you guys meet? Like, was it like sparks flying right away or did it take a minute? No. Well, with, well, with me, when I came, well, he was already here. Then I got drafted. And then, you know, they was coming off, um, when I was coming in, that's before I got here, I knew about, like, the <clears throat> USC Texas. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So Vince was here. He was here or whatever. So, like, oh just God. me getting drafted and me coming in, I'm seeing these guys, you know, they were, like, celebrities. Yeah. So as college kids, you know, they were, like, celebrities. Like yeah. USC with the Reggie Bush, the Lindell White, Vince Young. So I'm like, man, I come in here, I'm like, damn, I'm with these guys. You know what I'm saying? And then just going from there and then, like, I stayed in Brentwood. He stayed off, was that Westwood? Yeah, like Green Hills. Oh, yeah. like by Green Hills. So, like, man, me leaving the facility every day, like, going on the way going home, I'm stopping by his house. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm finna hang with Lindell White mm. about that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, just going from there, man, and it was crazy. And then, like, when I got here, his brothers and cousins was yeah. here, and then my brothers was, um, they moved up here with me. So they used to hang out all the time, like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. We gone away yeah. games or we at practice. They, they was with each other, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. then, like, you know, getting out of practice and stuff, and after the games, you know, we we want to meet up with them, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, it's just been that way the whole time. And then, like, when he ended up leaving or whatever, I was calling him. It was this one situation. I was calling him, like, bro, man, come to, man, come to Nashville. So he kept giving me these excuses or whatever. Man, I was like, depressed as fuck. I ain't gonna lie. What, what were you depressed about? I got cut, was done playing. Yeah. In that moment, you ain't thinking, like, especially when you don't get no calls. It's like one year, you're like, cool, you still working out. You're like, man, it might be the mm. year. You know what I mean? And it's crazy because you see dogs like Marshawn, AP, and some of them, they do whatever they want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Come back, mm -hmm. pick me up. And you're yeah. like, man, I ain't getting not one call. You know what I'm saying? So you, it, it messes with you. And then, you know, this is 2K. I, I seen it, you know what I'm saying? He balled out, and it's just like, man, I can't. What am I going to do up there with him? Like, mm. he's living his best life. Man, I'm, I'm an old retired dude, you know what I'm saying? I'm broke now, you know what I'm saying? Like, what what can I really do? So at the same time, he keep calling me like, man, like, what are you doing? Come out here. I'm making every excuse in the world. I remember this, like, clockwork. I'm like, oh, man, I got to hang out here. My mom needs me to do this. The dog's over there. He might need to walk him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> So one day he just finally calls like, hey, listen, Mike Moo, booked your ticket. I'm going to see you Friday. I don't want to hear nothing else. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. I got here, and I'll never forget it, man. Like, I was I was hurting and all. And I, the man gave me, like, a couple green cards, like, some money. I'm like, dude, go do, get whatever you need. Take these cars. Hang out. And I'm like, man, what? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so that's I'm awesome. Chilling. Wow. And as I'm chilling, he's taking me back out. And I'll never forget it, my birthday, man. He had, like, a little party he threw for me, man. And then he went on stage, and he, like, called me out and did all, you know, like, and I just remember in that moment, like, man, I'm so thankful because I don't know where I would have been because, like, life after football is probably the roughest shit in the world, man. I, Rough. It's the yeah. roughest. Because we our whole life is football. Yeah. Everything since you were a kid. And right. it's not only that, but being picked up by Snoop at college, playing at SC, playing around that team, being yeah. national champions. People dating celebrities yeah. back then. You're yeah. Linda White see. smashing dash here, and then you go to oh. getting cut. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's like cut. just flipped on your head. You cut. You know what I'm saying? You walking around, mm -hmm. like, man, I don't, you look good, man. Why ain't you? And you like, well, man, I'm one in the same thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, it does something to your psych, but thank God that he was around because he's like, man, you Lindell. What are you talking about? You go to these games, you look around. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Them still your jerseys, yeah. like, you can make your, you gotta, you gotta think you're better than that. You, cause you, I grew, he's like, man, I grew up on you. What you mean? So, yeah. Right. And, you know, from there, man, it's been, that was what, like 2012? That was your last was year of the Titans. Was it? Okay. Yeah, like 2012. Yeah. yeah I have been calling them since like 2000. Was it, was it like early 11? 11. Yeah, it was, it was a long, and like, I'm bucking. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to come out there. I'm going to come hang out. Yeah. You know, I'm going I'm to get there, man. I'm going to get there. Right. And everybody like, man, why, what are you doing? Why ain't you here? And I'm like, oh, man, I was, yeah, I was right. depressed. That shit was rough. So when you got cut, you went back home? Yeah. You went back home to hang out? Yeah, with the fan. Well, I was in Denver. So mm -hmm. I'm from Denver. I was playing with the Broncos, and then I get cut. So that's, like, even worse. It's a right. double smack, you know. Yeah, like I'm, a hometown team. Man. Hometown, yeah. Every time I walk in, and this is like, I'm like, yeah. They've been seeing me their whole life. So now it's like a couple months ago or shit, two weeks ago, it's like, man, 
we gonna see you on Monday. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then now it's like, man, we heard we heard you got cut, and you just walking around there, and everywhere you go, that's what you hear. So yeah, it was. It got to a point where I was in my mom's basement, like smoking so much weed, probably drinking lean every damn day. Like mm-hmm. you know what I mean? It was like I was floating and didn't didn't I didn't care about like what was gonna happen next. It was to a point where I didn't give a damn. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, like I said, if he didn't call me, ain't no telling what would happen. So you yeah. feel like that's what it was, or do you feel like there were other moments that that showed you like, okay, I can I can pivot this way, or make oh. this move and get out of the hole that it seemed like you were in. Getting out there and being around just him, you know what I mean? Like it was like when I got here, it was it was he treated me like I was still in Dale. Like you can drive whatever car you want, do whatever you need to do, just go out there, like hang out. Yeah. You don't need me. You know what I'm saying? And that's Did you I'm, see that he was struggling? I didn't know. Yeah, I was. I, was I didn't know. You know me, shit. I'm just, you know, I'm still playing. And like like I was saying before, our normal routine was we go to practice, I go to his house, then I go home. Or if we finna go out, me and all my brothers, we get dressed, we come to his house, and we all go out. So that's what I was just used to. So then when he left, it wasn't that no more, you know what I'm saying? So, like, you know, I was calling him, calling like, bro, what you got going on? Because I remember um, he came out here, but he was hurt. I think he, he yeah. tore his Achilles or yeah. something. He came out here. I had seen him downtown or whatever. And then, like, after that, like, I'm calling him, like, bro, when you coming back? Like, you know what I'm saying? Come out here. And, like, it wasn't, it was a thing. Like, I'm just, like, come out here for the game or something like that. You know what I'm saying? And the crazy thing about it is, like, once he came out here, from then on all the way until I retired, like, he was with me. Like, when I left here, I went to the New York. You know what I'm saying? He was with me. Went to um, Arizona for three years. He was with me the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So it was just crazy. I didn't <clears throat> I didn't know he was going through what he was going through. You know what I'm saying? But I'm like, bro, you tripping, man. I'm like, man, listen, I'm finna call my assistant right now. Yeah. Book his ticket, man. I know if I book his ticket, he ain't just gonna let me spend my money and not get on the flight. Right. So I bought the ticket. I had my assistant call him or whatever like that, and he came. And then ever since then, like, it's just been up. Yeah. Did, did you ever talk to him about you struggling? Like, did you ever catch on and realize you were struggling? The only reason mm. I continue to, like, proud is I think it's important. No, like, you're, no, this is, like, this being, is what people need being to know. like, yeah. a Lindell White figure, like, you're right. Like, I remember watching you guys, like, you yeah. play. Yes, sir. And going through what you're going through post-football, like, I'm just curious the entire dynamic of it. There's like, a lot of guys going through what you're going yeah, through right now. Absolutely. Right, right, right. I think, well, he knew, but he you don't know until, like, because like the roles reversed yeah. later mm-hmm. on. Yeah. <clears throat> After 2018, something happened to his, he just got cut yeah. on some bull crap. Like, he should have still been playing, but yeah. then, like, you basically don't get it. You get calls, but you ain't playing for no minimum when you two. Like, you know, when you certain people, you're like, I ain't doing that no more. Right. Like, got to be right. So yeah. it's like when you don't get the calls of the people that you want, like, he ended up going through it on the back end. And then I was there, and I'm like, you know, I, I you know, talk to him about it, like, going through yeah. it. Like, you 2K, mm. play 10, and you about to go to the Hall of Fame. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? And But he, I think in that moment, that's when he understood, like, what what he did for me back then. You know what I'm saying? Because he, it took. You don't really understand why you playing. None of us do. Because yeah. man, them checks coming in and the women and the lifestyle. That's what it is. That lifestyle. There's nothing like that. I don't care. What, you can make all the money in the world, but being an actual professional athlete, the plane rides, the access you have, there's nothing like that, man. And then when it's cut off, and you be like, damn, I'm just regular Lindell again. But yeah, you know what I'm saying. But once you hit a certain, like what Will's saying, once you hit a certain point in your life, like. There's dudes that grew up on you. Like, there's guys that, like, saw you play. Like, you'll never just be regular old Lindell anymore. And that's what I had to, you know. You had to figure that out for yourself, yeah. Sure.